good morning and welcome back to the next class of theory of computation in this class we are going to deal with context free grammar or type 2 grammar in the chomsky hierarchy till now we have studied something called as regular grammar which was used to generate a language called as regular language and the machine format to represent this set of languages was the finite automata now we are going to deal with context free grammar which is the superset of regular grammar and this context free grammar would be generating a language called as context free language and the machine format used to represent this set of languages are is called as push down automata right so basically a context free grammar is four tuple which is denoted as g equals to ntps where n is finite non empty set of symbols called as non terminal t is finite non empty set of symbols called as terminals p is finite set of production rule and s is the member of n called as the start symbol so in case of context free grammar the following restrictions are there on the uh, production rules so all the production rule of the grammar should follow the following structure that is a derives to alpha such that a is any non terminal and alpha is any combination of non terminal and terminal closure and union t star like a belongs to n and alpha belongs to n union t the whole star that is closure right so as an example the following is an example of context free grammar that is there is a single non terminal on the left hand side and on the right hand side you can have any combination of terminals and non terminals so the grammar is e derives to e plus e e derives to e star e e derives to bracket open e bracket close e derives to minus e and e derives to id so this is an example of context free grammar there is only a restriction on the left hand side in the left hand side you can have a single non terminal whereas on the right hand side you can have any combination of terminal and non terminal in case of context free grammar right so why this is called as context free so here non terminals are the producing symbols we have already seen this when we have studied grammar so non terminals are producing symbol by this it means that a particular non terminals can be replaced by certain other set of symbols or a string of symbols right so production rule in context free grammar should follow the following structure that is on the left hand side there is a single non terminal one non terminal that derives to a string of terminal and non terminal right so this is the condition for production rules in the context free grammar then if any additional symbol is present with the non terminal on the left hand side right so if there is a production and on in the production on the left hand side along with the producing non terminal there is there are some additional symbols so these symbols are called as context right so there are two types of context in this sense first the symbol can be on the left of the non terminal or it can be on the right of the non terminal so based on this there are two types of context first is the left context the another one is right context right so in your cfg we have seen that the production rule is following the structure that is on the left hand side there is a single non terminal right so if there is a single non terminal in the left hand side then it will never come with other symbol on in on the left hand side of the production rule so if there is no other symbol there is no additional symbol on the left hand side of the production rule therefore it is called as context free uh, grammar right so this is called as context free grammar because there is no additional symbol on the on the left hand side of the production rule along with the producing non terminal right so uh, let's move to the context free language so context free language this is the language defined by context free grammar right it is nothing but set of all the strings of terminals that are uh, generated from the grammar or the production rule of the grammar uh, or the context free grammar starting from the start symbol right so a context free grammar is defined as set of strings of terminals which are derivable from the start symbol of the grammar right if g is equals to ntps is a grammar then the language generated by the grammar is denoted by l of g and it is defined as l of g equals to w such that w is in t star here t stands for terminal so it is a closure of terminal so any string from terminals right and s 
on transitive closure derives to W. That is S on multiple transitions or multiple derivations derives to W. Right? If a grammar is given and we are required to check whether a particular string uh, is belongs to the language which is generated by the grammar or not. So for that purpose, we make use of derivation. We start from the start symbol and use the production rules uh, and try to form the terminal string which is given by considering the production which closely matches to our string right so here suppose the grammar given is like this g is consists of s a comma b as terminal p as set of production rule and s as the start symbol the production rule are given as p as s derives to a s a or s derives to b s b or s derives to epsilon these are the set of production rules and we are given two strings a b b a and a b a we are required to check whether these two strings belongs to the language which is generated by this grammar or not right so for that purpose we would be making use of derivation so we'll always start with the start symbol and we'll try uh, we'll use the production rule that matches to the uh, given string so here the given string is a b b a so what we can see over here it is we would be using a production rule that is starting that is producing a at the start and a at the end so here in the production rule, you can see that there is a first rule that is S derives to A S A that would produce A at the start and A at the end. So we'll use this particular rule for the first derivation. Then after this A, what is required in this string? We want there should be B and at the end also there should be B. So here this in the production that would be producing B is S derives to B S B. So this middle S will be replaced by second production rule. So we'll write it as like this a derives uh, that derives to a b s b and a so now here the string is now complete over here but still there is a non-terminal in between s so now to make it a b b a we need to replace this s with epsilon and there is a production s derives to epsilon in the set of production rule so we'll replace this s with epsilon so now the string that will be obtained will be a b epsilon b a and epsilon into a, a, a concatenated with anything is the same thing so we get a string as a b b a and thus this string belongs to the language which is generated by the given grammar similarly consider another string a b a so again the string is starting with a and ending with a so we'll use the first production rule right so we'll start with start symbol and replace it, th this start symbol with the first production rule that is a s a now the second symbol that we want over here is b the production rule that is having b over here is s derives to b s b right so if we replace this with that production rule so here uh, we would be replacing this s with b s b but there would be two b's right so we cannot replace this with b s b because this would add two b's but what we want we want over here that there should be a single b right as there is no rule that would be producing a single b over here so this string would be rejected or this would string will not belong to the language which is generated by this particular grammar right so in this way if a particular grammar is given and a string is given so you can check whether the string belongs to the particular language or the language which is generated by the grammar or not right so in the next class we would be looking at derivation tree thank you